Hey guys, and welcome to the finals for this PC here in Los Angeles. We have Terry Hong versus Gavin Michaels. I'm super excited. Please ignore what's happening in the background. Um, I'm Regina Angley, as always, joined by Sean. So, um, if Miguel would please just switch over to them as soon as possible. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah. Alright, so... Okay, so right now we're going to see uh, Terry on stream on yeah. the bottom, so everything's gonna be in Korean. Uh, but we'll try to translate that for yeah. you. Um, I'm super excited for this finals. Actually, we um, obviously just saw Gavin and we saw mm -hmm. Terry play a, um, a couple rounds ago. Yeah. Uh, so Terry, you know, very good at kind of understanding his forms, the speed control, and understanding how to use tailwind and trick room. Mm -hmm. Whereas Gavin just really good at like switching out, um, knowing exactly you know when it is safe to like mega evolve, mm -hmm. when it's safe for him to do certain things. He's very high on the offensive pressure. That Rotom Heat being able to mm -hmm. you know kind of just burn the competition away with that Willow Wisp and just kind of mm -hmm. negating their attacks. Um, and kind of Terry, I think, is going to have to really consider that. And they both have Landorus. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know that Gavin's Landorus is going to be uh, faster, has that choice graph, but Terry's Landorus uh -huh. has that ability to just kind of be like, let me sword stance and go after you with that ground DMZ. And so, you know, a lot of different options, I think, for either side. Um, so, but, uh, interestingly enough, um, on Terry's side, you know, we have that Intimoror, which mm -hmm. I think everybody's been starting to call it. Mm -hmm. And no sort of yeah. uh, other check on that on Gavin's side. Right. So right now on the screen, you can see Terry's team on the left. We have Gardevoir, Tapufini, Landorus, Therian, Zapdos, Incineroar, and Ferrothor. Whereas on Gavin's side, we have the Metagross, Landorus, Therian, uh, Tyranitar, Amoongus, Rotom Heat, as well as Tapu Lele. Yeah. And so actually on Gavin's side, we never saw in Nathan's matchup uh, that Metagross or that Amoongus. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure uh, kind of like you know, how it begins. Actually, I was talking to Terry earlier, and he uh -huh. was like, you know, against Gavin's team, I kind of like automatically lose. And I think uh -huh. Terry, having that mindset, having talked to me about that, mm -hmm. is going to have a little bit more of an uphill climb against this. And I think... Uh, the reason being is that Gardevoir that mm -hmm. Terry has, you know, used used very well in match one um, mm -hmm. in his last round does not match well against that Metagross at all. Right, and Terry also has that Incineroar, which seems kind of good against Metagross and Lily in general. Uh, he can do damage to Amoongus. Uh, of course, uh, Terry also has that Fini, so that means he can kind of negate the spore from Amoongus should he decide to go with Trick Room. Um, well. But I mean, you know, he, his one of his highest dealing damage Pokemon on, on Terry's side is that Landorus, mm -hmm. and that Amoongus will be for, free to sport even with ter, uh, even like you know with Terrain from Top of Fini up. Mm -hmm. And Terry actually taking as much time as he can to lock in his team because, you know, I mean, one just being those finals, but mm -hmm. really going against a team that you think you have a clear disadvantage against, uh -huh. you really want to consider the matchups and what Gavin's best options are and how you can counter that. Mm -hmm. So apparently, Terry took all his time to think about his team. Um, well, he does have to watch out for that Metagross, which carry the, uh, which might carry an Ice Punch to take it out, especially when it's not Scarf. Um, so we'll have to see. So right now, you're looking at... Uh, Metagross on top of Lele as uh -huh. a lead from uh, Gavin's side. Just kind of like this classic thing where, you know, Lele brings the train and Metagross benefits from it. Right. And Terry not really answering that, but brings his Landers and his, um, sorry, his Zapdos. So this is a classic lead that uh, we usually see from uh, a lot of teams playing this Metagross Lele or uh, Lele. I love Lele Gross leads. Lele Gross. Oh my yeah. god. Super underrated until it managed to win um, the, the Oceania Internationals. Yeah, so right now a few options that uh, Terry can do. He, uh, he can go for a Tailwind. Uh, it looks like he brought his Tailwind leads uh, right now. But of course he has to watch for uh, Metagross's Ice Punch as well as an attack from Lele which might be able to take it out before it can kill Lin. Um, well, I mean there's also nothing stopping Terry from clicking that Earthquake button on his own side. Yeah, um, true. Ice switches out his landers and brings in the Tapu Fini. Wants to take away that, that psychic benefit that both, uh, that both <laughs> Tapu Lele and Metagross will get from this train. Uh -huh. uh, no seeds coming from Zapdos. Uh, we know like some Zapdos carry um, seeds Mine. to boost special defense. <laughs> So Metagross goes for Mega Evolution. Well, it didn't get intimidated because of the clear body. Uh, right now, it seems to be going for an Ice Punch onto that Fini, yeah, uh, so which is not super effective. Uh, Tapu Lele going for a Moon Blast 
on that Zapdos going for some chip damage and we can probably expect a tailwind from Zapdos over here. So actually a really good turn for Terry being able to negate any sort of super effective damage onto his Landorus which um, with that Ground MD probably wouldn't have been able to take that Ice Punch especially after Metagross Mega Evolve and gets that Tough Claws uh, that Zapdos mm -hmm. taking Moonblast really comfortably gets the Tailwind and now gives Terry the speed advantage on here mm -hmm. and really you know Gam's gonna try to burn those Tailwind turns while Terry's gonna try his best to capitalize on them. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, okay. So Terry switches out his Tapu Fini. I think he's going to switch in his Incineroar, which now has Intimidate and he can Intimidate that Metagross. Um, well, this is showing uh, showing intimi uh, Incineroar's potential in this uh, format, especially with Intimidate. Metagross, for go Metagross goes for a Protect over here. Uh, Zapdos goes for Roost, recovering all the damage uh, that he has taken uh, before. And uh, the top of the other actually is going to go for that Psych Psych MZ. MZ. Does it target into the Zapdos or the Fini? <laughs> oh man, if it targets that I mean, Fini, uh, then like, yeah, yeah that, that switching from um, Terry on there. Uh, uh -huh. Actually, oh, he, yeah, oh, so manages no. to get that. Yeah, so a uh, good call by Gavin. Um, well, it, it was still kind of risky because Terry had uh, the potential to switch in his Cinderella into either slot. Um, but that Zapdos takes that uh, Psych oh, MZ very comfortably here especially out of terrain so a uh, good call by Terry now he has a speed advantage he can probably roost to recover the damage he has fake out which uh, because he's not in psychic terrain anymore he can um, fake out either his lady of metagross just for um, just to deny uh, one turn of uh, yeah. attack. Well, I mean, in Gavin's Metagross is really threatened here. It burned its protect last turn, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, Incineroar carrying. I mean, I'm gonna say almost all of them carrying Flare Blitz, and a lot of Zapdos having the ability to just kind of go for like a key wave. And Gavin recognizing that threat, switches out that Metagross, goes in for that lander uh, there, and gets his own intimidate into both Terry's Pokemon. Uh, kind of just negating that attack on that Incineroar more importantly than the Zapdos, as that Tapu Lele. Um, Goes goes for, for, yeah. yep. Doesn't want to take any damage from this turn, uh, especially mm -hmm. like you know with Terry having that speed advantage, and another roost from that Zap is going to regain a lot of its health, especially from that Psychic Z. So Gavin burned that Z move, and Zap mm -hmm. gets that health back. So Incineroar decides not to go fake out, instead just go for damage. Uh, it targeted a Metagross in the previous slot, but uh, Gavin just switched in and takes that really comfortably. Yeah, I so, mean, even behind like an Intimidate and like this choice to Scarf Landers, it's still a little bit above half health, so it does a lot of damage onto it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but now Terry... Like, so Terry might be in a slight... Uh, he might be in a better position here because of the Tailwind, but he still has to look out for the Landers, which could go for uh, a superpower onto the Incineroar. Um, it can go for a Rock Slide on the Zapdos to take it out. I mean, a combined attack from uh, Landorus and Lele might be able to take out the Zapdos and prevent future Tailwinds from going up. Uh, we see Terry decides that he wants to preserve his Incineroar, switches in his Landorus to go for an Intimidate, and uh, a Thunderbolt onto the Lele. So, um, well, this is a rather neutral play. We see Rock Slide coming out from, um, from Landorus, but he missed that Zapdos. Yeah, and then uh, to finish off this turn, the top of Lele going for the move blast. Uh -huh. some good damage on the Zapdos. Um, so, you know, kind of Terry being able to get those landers, it gets to cycle in that Intimidate, mm -hmm. negates the damage that the get damage output that Gavin's own landers is going to be doing. Mm -hmm. The top of Lele is still kind of a threat. You know, even if it's not on train, you know, top of Lele isn't a Pokemon you can really just kind of be like, oh, mm -hmm. I can leave it alone. Yeah. Um, Especially now that we know that, like, especially since we know that Terry's uh, Landis is carrying that Ground MZ, so, you know, not being able to take as much hits as it would be if it was Assault Vest, and Terry just kind of want to getting those those uh, Intimidates out even more, switches out that Zapdos for this Incineroar, mm -hmm. and negates the damage output from Gavin's uh, Rock Slide even more right now. And, you know, it connects and does almost minimal damage to both of these Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it was a call by Terry. He has to decide whether he wants to stay in and roost to, you know, to set up a tailwind on the next turn, or uh, he could switch it out, try to uh, intimidate like Landorus, so that the next time he comes in, he would be able to survive, say, another rock slide and go for another tailwind. Uh, we see Terry decides to go for the Z move here. Um, the Z move onto the Lele. That poor Lele. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, it's really smart on Terry because he understands that, hey, you know, this Landers isn't that much of a threat right now because it's been intimidated a couple times and Gao's going to be kind of forced to switch it off if he wants to get any damage from it and just takes out this threat of this Lele instead. And now Terry is going to kind of have that, that ability to control the terrain because now Gavin's old Metagross in the back uh, won't be able to benefit from any sort of sexy trade. Still kind of a threatening Pokemon because now it is at full attack and both of Terry's Intimidators are on the field. Uh -huh. um, but he has taken care of that special attacker on Gavin's side. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, this looks like a neutral position for Terry, I would say. I mean, he he's taken out the Lele, but he doesn't want to stay in. His Landris doesn't want to stay in on the Metagross. Uh, he sends out his Zapdos instead of the... Uh, I mean, he switches out his Cinero and sends in his Zapdos. Uh, Landris goes for Protect. Don't want to take any Ice Punches here. Uh, Terry goes for... <laughs> I think it's a Rock Slide, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, if you're Terry, it's like, that's fine if you lose your Zapdos here, because now you have this ability to kind of just switch in um, your, a free Intimidator later yeah. on in your next turn. But Zapdos is in range to eat its berry, gets back into the green. As Metagross goes for the, uh, goes for stopping Tantrum, I think, onto that yeah, Zapdos. Um, yeah. I, mostly because of that text definitely read like it, uh -huh. there was no damage and there was no protect uh, animation. Yeah. So I'm guessing that was stopping Tantrum. However, if stopping Tantrum fails, now Gavin's Metagross, if he uses stopping Tantrum next turn, gets uh -huh. double the attack power on it. Yeah, but so Terry has to be careful, but I think in this position, Terry would probably want to just stay in and go for... Well, he probably doesn't want his Landra to stay in because he burned Protect. He might switch in, you know, just to uh, shake things up, but I think he can go for a Tailwind here. Um, and that was a good switch by Terry because uh, I think he recognized that with the Intimidate drops on Landorus, uh the Rock Slide won't be able to kill it and at the same time was able to prop his berry. So, uh, good positioning by Terry. He decides to switch out this time. So, a double switch. Yeah, and so actually, yeah, like you said, a double switch from Terry on here, the top of Finny coming in in place of that Zapdos as um, that Landers has switched out for this Incineroar. And this top of Finny avoiding Voice. the Rock Slide, uh -huh. um, but you know, just does just minimal damage on this Incineroar, gets it into the red, but uh -huh. Metagross once more going for um, oh, this an Ice Punch. punch. Yeah. Onto the, the Zapdos. So I think Gavin was trying to deny a Tailwind from Zapdos. But uh, I think Terry recognizes that Zapdos was the prime target because he could get a Tailwind out, so switches in his Fini, which is a good play now. Uh, he has an Incineroar with his Fake Out. Uh, Landris is Intimidated, so he can go for a Fake Out and maybe a Muddy Water or Setup. Um, well, but Terry decides to switch it up even more this time. He switches out his Man. Incineroar for a Landris. What is this land <laughs> What is Gavin's Landris at? Like a minus five right Probably, now, I think? Something yeah. like that. I mean, enough that, you know, most damage won't even really be doing anything on here. Uh -huh. um, th those bars barely even moved on Terry's side after taking both of those. Uh, but Tapu Fini managing to get past that flinch, get some money ready, connects with both Pokemon. Um, super effective damage on... Ooh! Ooh. Yeah, it survives. Well, so I think what Gavin's trying to do is he wants to switch in but he doesn't want to take excessive damage especially with things like Fini in a few which could muddy water so I think his, um, he's using Landorus as like uh, to set up flinches uh, in his favor which is why he doesn't want to switch his Landorus uh, at the moment also because uh, most of Terry's Pokemon um, because he has a Fini and a Zapdos at the back it doesn't really I mean it, it doesn't um, he doesn't benefit Gavin from like Intimidate Drops, so... Uh, well, and Gavin finally deciding that those Intimidate Drops aren't worth it for his lander, switches it out for that Metagross as Rotom protects itself, not gonna want to be able, not gonna be able to take another Muddy Water from Finny. Uh, um, goes for that Protect oh. actually on Terry's side, and um, I think we're gonna see an Earthquake from here. Is that an Earthquake? Did Terry predict an Earthquake? And, oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> it was not an Earthquake, unfortunately. I actually, okay, yeah, he went for a... He went for something. Superpower, oh. I think. Uh, sword Stand? So, swords? Uh, no, Rock Tomb. Rock Tomb on Terry's side. To, uh, rock tomb on, on yeah, rock tomb on the on the Rotom. Uh, As you can tell, neither of us can read Korean at all. Yeah, so we have to guess. Um, <laughs> well, but if if well, I think Gavin recognized that Landorus with an earthquake in this situation because both his Pokemon are flying and levitating, so uh, he switches in his Metagross right here. Um, Terry decides to switch out his Landorus into his Incineroar. Incineroar. Yeah, uh, Tabufi <laughs> going to switch out again. <laughs> So, oh, we're gonna uh, get that Zapdos out onto the field once more, and uh -huh. you know, just kind of want to make sure that this Metagross, which has access to access summoning him, is gonna be kind of like uh, a little bit negated. That uh, I mean, man, ice punch, ice takes punch. it so nicely at three health now, as this Zapdos obviously takes that Thunderbolt really nicely as well. Um, and you know, just kind of showing like, hey, Terry's understanding what Gavin's best moves are at this point. Switches out and protects that Landorus, and makes sure that his Incineroar can take that really nicely. And you know, just kind of showing the power of this sort of intimidate cycle and kind of just, mm -hmm. uh, I, I know we've already mentioned it, but yeah. man, that I mean, I think Terry's putting himself in a position where he can set up Tailwind. Like if Metagross, like if Gavin called the switch and went for like a stomping tantrum, Landorus can come in again and uh, intimidate the Metagross so that Zapdos might be able to survive an Ice Punch. Uh, so, uh, Incineroar in goes for a Fake Out onto Metagross and Zapdos goes for a Tailwind. Uh, 
Rodom just going for chip damage. Well, it kills. Yeah, I just want to, yeah, to knock out that Incineroar finally. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you can knock, knock out at least, like, one Intimidator on your opponent's side of the field, that's just one less stage of attack. Uh, that's one less Intimidator you'll have to worry about for your Pokemon. And especially mm -hmm. because Gavin's team is so full of, like, heavy hitters. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, now you're just forcing Terry to have his Landis as the only one left on here. Mm -hmm. And uh, brings it back in, gets Intimidate into that Metagross. Um, and, you know, kind of... Can probably pass. Actually, no, won't be able to take an ice punch. So most likely. So yeah, I think the Landris can't take an ice punch. So it has to decide whether Landris wants to earthquake here and zap those double targeting in the Metagross. Otherwise, the Landris has to go for say the Rota, maybe a Rock Slide. But Terry has to make the call as to whether Metagross would ice punch or uh, to switch out. Well, in this case, Gavin uh, switched out into his Landris, trying to bring uh, Landris attack down a little bit. Uh, Landros goes for a rock to onto that um, Rotom Heat. Yeah, it doesn't quite get the knockout on there though as uh, it manages yeah. to eat its berry, recover all that health back up. And mm -hmm. you know, kind of showing uh, this, this Rotom is definitely here to stick around a little bit. But the Zapdos uh -huh. does go through the roost on Terry's side, gets a lot of its HP back. Gonna be around to uh, hopefully, you know, get another Tailwind up. And this Rotom finally going for an attack onto this Landris, gets the will o -Wisp on the first try, burns this Landris, mm -hmm. and is now able to just kind of, you know, negate its own attack without having to worry about psyching out these Intimidates. Right. So, um... Well, now we have a Landorus that, I mean, we have two Landorus. One is, uh, I mean, Terry's Landorus is burned. Um, it might not be able to pull off that Earthquake that we, uh, onto the Metagross. And so it might not be able to KO the Metagross on the next turn. Um, well, okay, so... Terry's going to be switching out his Landorus into that Tapu Fini. Uh -huh. uh, resets on the bad Intimidate that they got from Gavin. So on top of the Intimidate and the Burn, Terry doesn't want to be having that much of the nerf to his attack. Um, and this, this, uh, sorry, this Zapdos going for the Heat Wave finally gets a knockout onto the Landorus on Gavin's side with that 1 HP. Does very minimal damage onto this, uh, ro onto this Rotom. And Rotom goes for the Thunderbolt into Zapdos. Gets some HP drop on there, but, you know, I think if you're, if you're Terry, you're breathing a sigh of relief that it wasn't top of any spot. Now Gavin being forced to bring in that Metagross, um, and this Metagross and this, this Rotom side by side as they face off against the last three of Terry's Pokemon. However, mm -hmm. Terry's biggest threat against that Metagross is now burned. Uh huh. Well, even though Terry's Metagross is, I mean, Terry's Landorus is burned, he still has the option of cycling Intimidates to, uh, to uh, lower Metagross's attack, and Metagross can switch out, so. Um, he could still use Landris for the utility. Um, we see Rodam going for a protect, don't want to take any uh, muddy waters from that Fini. Zapdos keep, goes for a roost here. No uh, intimidate cycles right now from yeah. Terry's side. Probably not going to want to play into Gavin's strategy if that's what mm -hmm. he's going for. As top of Fini goes um, for a muddy water, I think, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm starting to. No, I'm not letting yeah. Terry that. I think any damage. It, I think I think Metagross is the biggest threat for Terry right now. So any damage on Metagross is good damage. Um, Terry probably doesn't want his Zapdos to go down too quickly, so he's roosting to recover the damage. Um, I mean, and also if you're Terry, you're going for those muddy waters. You're crossing your fingers and hoping for those accuracy drops. I mean, uh -huh. uh, Metagross, you know, known to carry moves that have that don't quite have that 100% accuracy and really kind of hurt it in the end. So Zapdos switching out on this turn, gonna come in for, like, that Landorus gonna be coming in for it, gonna negate that, um, that Metagross just a little bit with that minus, uh, minus one attack stage now. And Terry gonna be in a position to be able to start cycling as he needs to. Uh-huh. Oh! Yeah, and that Ice Punch, well, whether it was intended or not, uh, it did take out the Landorus, so, uh, I, I think, I think Terry, in this position, he would want to get rid of Slenderous, so cycling the Intimidate was useful. And now he can chip like Metagross with that uh, Muddy Water. Yeah. And you've also got this, uh, this chance to, like, the Sapphire is still here, it's going to be eating its berry, and now you've got the Zapdos, which we know has Heat Wave, and I think uh, it's still in Tailwind turn right now. Right. So you're going to be able to really just kind of go after both of Gavin's Pokemon here. This Metagross, um, you know, can't touch um, can't touch that Zapdos as much, with obviously, with Zapdos and mm -hmm. can kind of go after it with Ice Punch, but at, at a minus one won't be doing as much here yeah and you know if the top of any can uh, out sorry guys i uh, knocked some things off yeah. if the top of any can connect with this muddy water once more it'll be taking care of that rotom and uh -huh. he does some really good chip damage onto that metagross uh, but yeah. does go for a protect actually uh-huh we've seen that rotom do about 50 or 60 percent on that Fini, so i think terry wants to preserve that Fini for that uh Zandos going for the tailwind so now it has a speed advantage against metagross and that rotom 
Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I'm just kind of going after that uh, top of Finney because, you know, understanding that it is the, it is clearly the bigger threat on Terry's side of the field mm -hmm. and knocking that out means that he can kind of just go after the Zapdos because the Zapdos might not just have that much offensive pressure to be able to protect itself against both uh, this Rotom and this Metagross. Mm -hmm. um, this, you know, yeah. this Rotom hasn't taken any sort of uh, stat drop because of overheat, mm -hmm. so it could kind of clean up nicely on that Zapdos. But Metagross going for a protect on this turn, you know, um, so Pokemon is I, still. Yeah, so on screen you can see Terry's time, he has 19 seconds left, so one, one play that Gavin could go for is to play the timer. So um, if Gavin goes for passive plays here and stalls out Terry's timer, he might be able to clutch a win here. Yeah, I think uh, it's a little bit harder because if uh -huh. you're Terry, then you understand what your end game is now. Um, you know, you've got this top of and this Zapdos. This Zapdos has Heat Wave mm -hmm. and can you know do single target damage now onto this Metagross. Uh -huh. And yeah, I mean Terry's at like you know less than almost less than 10 seconds left. Locks uh -huh. in though, and Gavin is at two minutes still. Uh -huh. But this Metagross goes for a double protect, for doesn't reason. get it. Yeah. Uh, we might be actually in a different ballpark if you got some double attack. Mm -hmm. Almost, but not quite. Gets a knockout yeah, on the Metagross. Yeah, but a double on two to Metagross should be able to take it off. That's, that's a little scary, going yeah. for the Muddy Water onto that Metagross. Because Muddy Water you know, has that really high tendency to continually miss its opponent. Mm -hmm. But game one going to Terry um, in a really close match, actually. A lot of switching and kind of trying to predict on here. Uh, mm -hmm. I I think Gavin needs to figure out a way to stop those intimidate cycles because the minute Terry gets the momentum to start intimidating Pokemon and bring in intimidates, Gavin's going to be on the back foot trying to catch up and make sure his heavy attacking Pokemon have the ability to do what they're meant to do, which is attack. Right. Uh, we saw in the previous game that Gavin was going for flinches rather than attacking, so that, I mean, if he didn't get the flinches, it would put him in probably a better position but unfortunately we see that Gavin is trying to play catch up over here um, with like the rock slide flinches. Uh, also we we know that Gavin has that uh, that Rotom Heat which has the Will Wisp so one thing he could do was is probably try to burn that Landorus and um, chip that Incineroar because these two Pokemon are giving problems for um, Gavin. And I think it's hard too because if you're on Gavin's side, like, you know, obviously if you're Gavin, you don't want to lock yourself into a move where you can't touch half of Terry's Pokemon. I mean, you've got the Zapdos and the Slanderous that Terry has been using and kind of cycling through. And if you're Gavin and you lock yourself into Earthquake, then you know, then as Terry, you know, like, he's going to have to switch out. So I'm kind of free to target down whatever I need to. And I think Gavin trying to have to understand, hey, what are the ways I can stop this Tailwind, stop this Intimidate cycle? And, you know, Choice Scarf Landorus is a good Pokemon. Uh, but you need to be able to use it to its full potential, and that's hard, I think, now in this matchup against Terry yeah. because of that Landorus and that Zapdos, which Terry is very heavily reliant on. Right. Thus, Terry has the option of speed control uh, with his Tailwind. He's most likely not bringing Trick Room, but in um, Gavin doesn't really have a true way of like manipulating the speeds for the entire field. Um, his Tyranita can Dragon Dance to um, get a speed up, but because Terry has in uh, Incineroar and Landorus, um, getting multiple Dragon Dances up at the same time would be difficult. Alright, but Gavin showing us that he might have a different answer to what's going on here when he leads Amoongus and Landorus there and versus Terry's Zapdos and Incineroar. So we'll, have, we'll be having that in exchange of Intimidates, excuse me, once more out on the field. Um, I think it'll be fun to kind of see like, you know, now this last two Pokemon that Gavin didn't bring in that previous round. We had the Metagross Game 1 and now we have this Amoongus Game 2. And Amoongus is uh, quite honestly one of the most frustrating Pokemon I think I've ever had the uh, displeasure of running into with its bulk and its ability to just kind of take attacks so it just kind of absorbs them and having that regenerator ability too and you know with this Intimidate on Gavin's side even a Flare Blitz might be just enough to proc the barrier on Amoongus side and that's uh, definitely not something you want to do. Yeah and I think Gavin recognized that uh, for Terry he's Speed control and intimidate are flying types, so he can freely spore them without fear of Dini coming in. Uh, but he, of course, has to watch out for that uh, Incineroar, which he can probably deal with uh, with his Landorus and his Metagross uh, stomping tantrum. But uh, we'll have to see how uh, Gavin handles it. So, uh, Gavin's Landorus going for a U turn, trying to preserve that intimidate. 
<laughs> yeah, as we see uh, lots of intimidated going on here. <laughs> yeah, especially as um, that Incineroar on Terra side goes for the fake out onto the Amoongus as the Zapdos on Terra side had switched out for that Landorus. And Tapu Lele now going to be taking control of this field, going to be bringing with it that Psychic Terrain. And we know that that Psychic MZ on Gavin's side does massive damage once it's on Terrain. And, you know, this Amoongus, that it's been uh, faked out, has that ability to kind of just go for Spore. And if Terry ignores this Tapu Lele by Gavin's side, uh, you know, barring a Rage Powder from that Amoongus, if Gavin, if that, that Tapu Lele gets it going, it's going to deal a lot of damage onto whatever is next to that Incineroar. Yeah, plus the Tapu Lele isn't affected by Intimidate, so something Gavin can do is to redirect all the single ta single target damage attacks to Amoongus, and then just churn out as much damage as he can with uh, Tapu Lele. But Terry denying that boost of Psychic Terrain to Tapu Lele by bringing in his Tapu Fini and make sure that his, any spores will not be touching Pokemon on the ground, but Gavin switching out his, um, sorry, his Amoongus for the Landers gets an Intimidate, importantly, onto that Incineroar, and most importantly, onto that Tapu Fini. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we see a Z move coming out from Gavin's uh, Tapu Lele, so most likely a second Z onto what was that um, Landorus slot. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which, you know, honestly, I think that's a good switch for Terry because he understands that, you know, this Lele is infinitely more threatening once it has access to his terrain as well. And so this Tapu Fini might be able to take this a little bit better um, than that Landorus because it's done that terrain change. Going to be able to proc its berry to get all that health back. And mm -hmm. So, you know, still in a pretty comfortable position. And this, oh. and Terry going for the knockoff. Knock off. Yeah. So it does manage to get the Choice Scarf knocked off on Gavin's side of the field. Um, Mm -hmm. And make sure that now this choice spark is not there anymore. Yeah. I think that's quite useful because, um, you know, Landra's having choice scarf, it has that speed advantage, it can go for like rock slides, and, uh, you know, it's it, it can go for U turn and switch out, so it, it's kind of annoying when it has a choice scarf, but now knocking it off, um, I think it's, uh, you, your, I mean, Terry Speedy or like Landra's can deal with it better. Yeah. Yeah. And Terry will be switching out that Intimeroar mm -hmm. for his own Landorus now going to get Intimidate into both of Gavin's Pokemon as Tapu Fini protects itself, um, not quite in a position really to just be taking massive amounts of damage as the Moonblast actually from Tapu Lele goes into what was that Incineroar and is now that Landorus taking a lot of damage and gets it to under half as yeah. Gavin double downs into that um, Landorus and goes for a U-turn. Yeah, not a lot of damage from that U-turn on there. Um, yeah, he got Intimidated twice, so... Um... Well, but I think Gavin's strategy is to like churn as much damage as he can, mm -hmm. and now he's bringing his Metagross, so this is a good position for Gavin. Uh, he has the speed to actually take out the Landorus with Ice Punch, it can uh, probably go for an Iron Head uh, onto the Tapu Fini, or maybe even double on it because uh, Fini has already used up his berry. Yeah, and there's no Tailwind support um, from Terry's side of the field now because he didn't use it with that Zapdos turn yeah. one. But we have the switch out from Landers into that Incineroar, getting the Intimidate once more. Yeah. Um, Clear obviously, body. Yeah, obviously though Tapu Lele is going to be ignoring that. Love its special attack a lot more than its physical yeah. attack. But Tapu Fini switching out, I see Gavin from this side uh, cheering, which means uh, we might actually have a bit of a bad switch in for Terry, potentially. Uh -huh. That Metagross going for uh, that Mega Evolution might actually be going for the Ice Punch onto that Zapdos slot. Probably. Plus, it hasn't been intimidated. It, it was. It has still has cave body when intimidated. Switch it, uh, incineral switch in. Yeah. And oh. there we go. That Zapdos. Ice, yeah. With that uh, with that ice punch makes Zapdos eat its berry, and I think we might actually have a double down from that Tapu Lele into uh, that spot um, as Tapu Lele goes for the moon base. block. Oh no! Oh no! Onto the incineral. Yeah. That was a really good read by Gavin. I think he recognized that um, Terry was constantly switching in things. So. Um, well, if he if he targeted that Fini slot with an Ice Punch, um, the Landorus or the Zapdos would take super effective damage. And even if it didn't, the combination of an Ice Punch plus another attack from Lele the next turn would probably be able to KO it. Right. And now Gavin answering with his own Intimidate Cycle, switching out that Tapu Lele and saving the terrain for later as he brings us his Landorus, going to negate a little bit of that uh, Flare Blitz damage potentially from that Incineroar. Um, actually goes for the Fake Out into the Metagross and this Zapdos is going to be possibly pretty to go. Yep. Tailwind. Which, you know, honestly, I think uh, Terry finally found the time to be able to go for that Tailwind and, you know, negating, being able to negate that Metagross and making sure that he has that speed advantage, especially because Gavin doesn't have that Choice Scarf anymore on his Landers. Um, and it's kind of now just being able to kind of go after it. Yeah, so Incineroar switches out for Landorus. Uh, 
probably doesn't want to stay in. Especially Gavin now has the option of Earthquaking uh, into a Metagross Protect so it doesn't take damage. Then the next turn it doesn't have to Earthquake. So uh, we see a Metagross goes for a Protect and Landorus. I think it is. Yeah. It, oh no! We have the Heat Wave actually from Terry's side. Gonna connect yeah. with only that Landorus because of that Protect with the Metagross. But I think we did see just that Earthquake right now. Yep. Uh -huh. We did have Gavin choose an Earthquake on there. And like you said, burn the Protect on Metagross's side. So. Um, so now Metagross can't... Well, now Gavin has the option of doing something else on his land, it's not necessarily Earthquake. He can probably go for a Rock Slide and an Ice Punch onto uh, Metagross or Zapdos. But of course he has to watch out because Terry's uh, Landorus and... I mean, Terry's Landorus can freely Earthquake that Metagross. Right. And Gavin not going to be one of taking that threat. He sends in his Amoongus to kind of eat up whatever attacks Terry might be throwing its way. And we have that Ground DMZ from Terry. Um, so really good call on Gavin to be switching out that Metagross for that Amoongus. Yeah. It eats it up so nicely. I actually, did, as long as he didn't go for the Landorus and was expecting to switch out, which uh -huh. honestly switch well, out there, there would be a really hard read for Terry to make, so I don't think he would be able to do that. Hey, reads are part of this game and they're really difficult sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, but this thing is, is going to be taking it very Oh, and it hangs on. Yep, eats its berry, but we might actually get the heat wave from Terry's side of the field. Uh -huh. Does connect with both Pokemon and manages to pick up. No, not quite the knockout on that Amoongus. Oh my gosh. Uh -huh. It survived. Yikes. Yeah. I mean, hey, you can't ask for a more exciting final at this point then, you know? Uh -huh. uh, Gavin switching out that Landorus, gonna be getting a Pokemon back in, gonna be saving that Intimidate for later. Uh -huh. uh, and that was everybody behind us just realizing that Amoongus survived that heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, that Amoongus not looking too good with like a sil silver of HP. Well, Terry still has a Tailwind, can still Earthquake plus uh, Thunderbolt and Tapu Lele. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously Gavin's not gonna want the Rage Powder here because he knows that Terry has access to a bunch of spread moves. Uh -huh. Plus he doesn't want to switch into anything that could take damage, so maybe Gavin will want to sacrifice his Amoongus here. I think that might be like honestly his best uh, his best idea. Oh, but Terry actually switching out for Tapu Fini. Again, rewriting this terrain on the field. Not a lot of obviously weathered uh, control here, but we have a lot of terrain fighting. And kind of just want to deny Tapu Fini that ability to kind of get its um, yeah. get its boost from there. All right, Gavin switching his Amoongus out. Probably want to preserve the Amoongus for later. Yeah, yeah that Amoongus is uh, going to be so annoying with that regenerator. Really going to get back some of its health because it switched out. Uh-huh. And Lender switches in. Uh, Terry decides to go for a roost instead of a thunderbolt, so... Okay, and uh, that top Lele gonna go for the second into Terry's uh, Zapdos, gets the critical hit on there. Uh, so all that health that Zapdos just got back, it, it used to eat up that psychic. Um, so now we have this, you know, yeah. it's still, wow, this is actually like yeah. a pretty tight match though. So both both uh -huh. players have all four of their Pokemon. Um, this Lele still sitting comfortably at like full health. I think that Metagross is also still at full health. Yeah, I think a little bit, I think like both players had to make a little bit of reads here. Like, I think Terry was expecting, uh, I mean, it was very dangerous for Terry not to attack the Amoongus because sport like either the Zapdos or the Landorus. But at the same time, I think, uh, Ga well, Gavin was thinking, okay, maybe Terry's probably going to just go for an attack here. So this gives him the opportunity to uh, chip Zapdos. Yeah. But Terry made a counter read, so that was well, that was risky, but that was that, that did work out for Terry. Yep, and Gavin going for the rock slide, uh, following up that Tapu Lele's moon blast onto both of Terry's Pokemon. Picks up the knockout on the Incineroar, and Tapu Fini um, is actually going to be using muddy water on here. The Tapu Lele on Gavin's side, avoiding it, connects with this Landorus, does manage to get the knockout on it finally. Um, but you know, one of Terry's biggest, uh, so one of Terry's biggest. Like corner pieces of his team is now knocked out. Not gonna uh, be able to cycle into the as much as possible. While Gavin still has um, that Metagross in the back, mm -hmm. and you know Terry gonna have to really be like, yeah, maybe I should go after this Metagross now. Yeah. I think the Incineroar was like really important for uh, Terry. Like it deals with Lele and uh, Metagross, but now that it's out of field, I think it will be much easier for Gavin to uh, uh, to attack his uh, other Pokemon. Yeah, especially because Terry only has that Zapdos left in the back, and you know, Gavin has that Amoongus, but Amoongus has like that kind of ability to sometimes go 1v1 depending on where it's at and like what its moveset is. But that Zapdos back there, you know, has access to that Heat Wave and could kind of attack Gavin's Pokemon. Does, the Landers does get switched out for this Zapdos. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure if Tailwind was. Um, well, I think Terry's just going for Intimidate plays now, just trying to make sure it doesn't get killed by Megagross Ice Punch. Uh, but. I wonder if um, 
I wonder if Terry has uh, a backup plan because it seems like he's in a tight spot right now. Ice Punch can kill Landers and Bob Zapdos. Uh, and we can just, I mean, Lily can just chip at me and whatever that comes in the next turn. Yeah, and I actually think we might be just be going to a game play here because this top of any is in the red and uh, this Landers is not quite really in a position to be taking any sort of damage on here. I don't think Terry's quite burnt. No, he did burn his, uh, his Z move on that I was earlier. Um, and honestly, like, <coughs> Terry has to be faster than both of the Pokemon on Gavin's side to be able to, be, to even really have like, a chance on here. But we've seen that Tapu Lele go before that Tapu Fini and kind of do enough damage that another attack from Tapu Lele will knock out this Tapu Fini. Um, so, you know, Terry at this point may be thinking, hey, uh, in game three, do I keep going with Intimidate Cycling? Do I bring in a different mode? Like, what do I do to preserve these Pokemon better? Because it's nice to be able to switch out Intimidates, but then you're risking a, a lot of, you still have all four Pokemon, uh, but at varying degrees of health. Right. Then at the same time, you also want to preserve the Pokemon that uh, you need to deal with the other team. Because mm -hmm. if you keep cycling and switching out, you're just going to rack up damage over a long period of time. And that puts you in kill range for anything that's much faster than uh, yeah. Yoshi. Yeah, and so Terry kind of recognizing this situation uh, does forfeit the match, so it gives it to Gavin. And now we are going to a game three for this finals. I mean, it's it's. I think it's, finals are always more fun once we go to game three. Yeah. Not not for the players, obviously, but definitely for us. <laughs> uh -huh. right. um, but again, I think. Oh. So right now we. Oh. Intimate. Okay. Cool. So uh, we'll, before we get into this game three, we will be having a little bit of a charger issue here. Uh, we are having players in red. So don't forget, guys, when you go to events, bring your chargers, bring a battery pack, and make sure you have backup uh -huh. because you don't want to be in the red either for your Pokemon or for your DS. This has been a public service announcement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we're going back to so the final game of finals in the Los Angeles Premier Challenge 7. On the left, we see Terry's team, uh, Gardevoir, Tapafini, Landros, Therian, Zapdos, uh, Incineroar, and Ferrothorn. And on the right, we see Gavin's team, Mega Metagross, Landorus, Tyranitar, Amoongus, Rodom Heat, and Tapu Lele. I think Gavin bringing Amoongus was really like a smart idea. Like, obviously, it checked a lot of Terry's Pokemon, and uh -huh. it took hits so nicely. I mean, um, I, it's just it's such a rough Pokemon to try to take down because uh -huh. it's got enough bulk that it can survive and then once you get it into the range where it hits a fairy, you uh -huh. can just use Regenerator to get back some of that health that it's lost. Yeah. And I think Gavin really understood that, you know, I left behind that Rotom, he uh, wasn't really able to do anything against Terry's team, mm -hmm. but the Samungus is in a better position to kind of just go after some of Terry's Pokemon. Yeah. But I think Terry now mm -hmm. has to understand, he has to be a lot more careful with his Intimidators. Yeah. And I, and I think... Um, the Amoongus, right? Just having the potential to spore like Landorus and Zapdos is really huge. Okay. That means uh, that means Terry has to spend some turns to actually prioritize taking out Amoongus before it spores his entire team. So um, even though Amoongus isn't doing anything passive, it still has that potential to draw attacks away from uh, his partners just by being there. Yeah, and I think that's what I find is like, uh -huh. you, if you don't have a strategy right away to deal with Amoongus, then it's going to be one of those Pokemon who can just sit there and take whatever you throw at it. And uh -huh. then, you know, when it comes down to all of your Pokemon versus the Amoongus, the Amoongus can just score things unless you have something to kind of really just stop it. Um, yeah. And now we've got kind of like a change um, from so, Terry's side of the field. Yeah, <laughs> so Terry decides to bring his uh, Trick Roomish mode here, Tapu Fini and Gardevoir. Whereas Gavin is bringing his Vanderous and Tapu Lele. Yeah, so a bit of change from everybody on this field. We've got, like, like you said, this Gardevoir and this Tapu Mini versus Tapu Lele and Landorus Theron. So yeah. this Intimidate from Landorus could not be really doing much to either of the Pokemon on here. And we will have the end of this, uh, the end of like all of the cycling. We will have Misty Terrain on the field instead of um, the instead of a uh, Psychic Terrain. Wait, so oh no! Wait, did it trace you? So it traced. Oh, no! <laughs> So he traced, so instead of tracing Intimidate, manages to trace Psychic Terrain, gives Terrain Control back to Gavin, which, you know, if you're Gavin, you're like, alright, sweet, this is great, uh -huh. this works for me instead. Um, I mean, yeah. RNG, guys, yeah. uh, so be careful. Remember, when you're playing with Gardevoir, you're gambling even more in a game full of RNG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so what seems to be a good position for Terry is now a better now, position for yeah. Gavin. Uh, now <laughs> Terry has to spend turns just to cycle Fiend's Misty Terrain so and he there, can yeah. ensure he doesn't and get scored. And there sport. we go. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it, it, it's going to take damage from stuff from uh, Tapu Lele. So. I mean, that's just, that's just rough because now Gavin is free to use that Psyche MZ and even 
even on terrain and even against a Pokemon that is part psychic, that uh -huh. psychic that psychium will do will do just amazing damage on here. And, and you know, I don't know if you guys can hear him in the back, uh -huh. but the Bubbly Space are all laughing really hard here. The Gardevoir does protect though. Uh -huh. Not gonna want to take any sort of psychic uh, psychic on here, but uh, does does eat sort of that that move from there. Very very nice. Um, well, and it was going after that Gardevoir and um, the Psychium Z Lele. I think from the way that they're cheering back there, this Lele is targeting down that Gardevoir, which is behind. Oh no, it's targeting oh, target Incineroar! Oh my god! <laughs> so, this is an interesting turn of events. Like, Woo! Gavin's trying to switch with his U turn, gets blocked by uh, Gardevoir. Yeah, gets blocked by Protect. Incineroar comes in, eats up the Psychic terrain. Now, Incineroar comes in, has his fake out, can fake out stuff, and, and uh, Gardevoir can Shadow go for it. For a trick room. So yes, that's a Shadow Ball. So Shadow Ball from Tapu Lele onto the Gardevoir. Not enough to take it out. Uh, we've seen in like a previous game before hey. Terry's Gardevoir survived an overheat from oh, yeah. uh, Charizard White. So, in, uh, uh, yeah, was it in Sun? No. Yeah, in Sun. Oh so yeah, it's really specially defensive. Uh, this Gardevoir is a tank, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so um, now Speed Control is uh, with Terry. He set up the Trick Room and now Incineroar can uh, go for a uh, knockoff onto Lele or some other attack onto Landorus. Yeah, and that Landorus on Gavin's side, obviously not going to like that because it is a choice scarf, so being switched out for that Rotom Heat. As Top Lele goes for a protect, um, not going to take any sort of attack from either side on Terry's side of the field, as Incineroar actually goes for a Flare Blitz into the Rotom Heat slot, does some, uh, like, a quarter damage onto there. Uh -huh. Not enough to, you know, really do considerable damage. Um, Gardevoir going for a Hyper, hyper voice. voice. Yeah, it looks like a Hyper whoop, Voice. Whoop. <laughs> there's, there's only so many moves we can try to protect. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, that's a critical hit. So, yeah, it seems like Terry now with the speed control is chipping away at uh, both Gavin's Pokemon. Uh, we haven't really seen the Amoongus. Um, I mean, you know, uh, I think if you're Terry, you're crossing your fingers and hoping he didn't bring Amoongus, and if you're uh -huh. Gavin, you're being like, wait, shoot, I don't think I brought Amoongus because we have this Rotom Heat here, and I don't, uh -huh. I don't quite think that both Rotom Heat and Amoongus can have, you know, kind of like the same flat here. Yeah. But now if you're Terry, you're trying to use your Trick Room terms as much as possible, uh -huh. and we have Tapu Fini rewriting that terrain. No more trace from Gardevoir, gonna give back that psychic terrain control uh, uh -huh. to Gavin. <laughs> As that Tapu Lele is going to be actually switched out yeah. on this turn. Going to be switched out, I think, possibly for that lander. Yes. Land Ooh. Yeah, but this is a good position for Terry. He's switching out his Gardevoir into Feeny. Now both Gavin's Pokemon will take super practice damage from Feeny's Money Water. Um, at the same time, Terry can go for uh, attack. So he knocked off Rotom's Berry, preventing it from recovering. <laughs> Rodon, Rodon going for a last stitch overheat, but not super effective against Speedy because of that switch in. So is it, Terry's in a really good position right now. He has the speed control, he has the time advantage to uh, deal damage on both of Gavin's Pokemon. Knocked off that berry on Rodon, yeah. so he couldn't eat it after taking that knockoff hit. Um, uh -huh. This Landorus is going to be going last camp protect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, going to have to do a manual switch out if Gavin really wants a different Pokemon on here. But yeah. Incineroar actually switches out, and we've got um, this Landorus on his side. So I'm guessing Gavin might have just clicked Earthquake instead, because I don't think we have quite the switch out yet. From I don't know, I mean, he... well... Or Rock I mean, He could go for damage here, uh, but he Fine. doesn't. Yeah, so, so Landorus switches out, goes into Tapu Lele, so... I mean, you know, it's not a bad switch out because you get terrain control again, you have your Intimidator on here, you're burning another Trick Room turn, so you're, um, so your Landers can come in comfortably and use that Choice Scarf to his advantage as Tapu Fini goes, goes for that Muddy yeah. Water, mm -hmm. uh, Rotom protecting itself, so not going to take any damage, but Tapu Lele can be getting hit by this, you know, fishing, hopefully, for maybe some accuracy drops on here, doesn't quite get them yet. Well, so, Terrain's back in control with Gavin, um, he could probably go, I mean, for Terry, he could probably try to. I mean, he could. He has the option of dealing damage onto both. Uh, I mean, onto Tapu Lele with the Ground MZ. Uh, but he has to watch out for that Will Wisp from the Rodom. Right? Yeah. And Tapu Fini is actually going to be switching out on this turn. So Terry going to want to save that terrain control for later as we get Gardevoir once more onto the psychic terrain. Mm -hmm. um, and going to be switching out also his Landorus. So I think right. we're going to be getting an Incineroar once uh -huh. more. There we are. And they Intimidate. Um, not going to really quite do much to either Tapu Lele or this Rotom, but this Rotom is at minus two after that overheat from earlier. Mm -hmm. I think he could be baiting like Psychics, like if Gavin decided to go with Psychic, he would probably be in a good position if he's switching his Incineroar. Then at the same time he could... Oh, yeah. So Rodon went for a Thunderbolt and there was a critical hit on the Gardevoir. But that Gardevoir is like, I think it's hiding a brick wall behind that dress at this point because it is taking these hits like crazy. Well, it's super, super specially defensive. So. It's that brick wall behind the dress, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So but, brick you know, walls, big uh, block physical attack. No? <laughs> um, but so the stop really, like, you know, having Brenda to protect now, Terry's kind of free to go after it. This Rotom being switched out, though, gonna go for that, in, uh, sorry, for that Intimidate from the Landorus into that Incineroar, uh, more specifically, because, you know, gonna want to eat up all those Flare Blitzes, all those knockoffs. Um, and Tapu Lele is actually also going to be using Moonblast on there. Going to pick up the knockout finally on this Gardevoir. Uh -huh. You know, that 6 HP. Yeah, um, so no more Trick Rooms from right Gardevoir. But I think yeah. Terry's still in a rather good position here. He still can... Um, well, he still has the, the Mons to deal enough uh, damage out of Trick Rooms. So, um, Man, people, I will say this, people who don't think that Intimidate is super important, just look at that damage that is left on that Tapu Lele. Like, if that Intimidate had been Intimidated, it would have just been able to pick up that knockout and just kind of do a trade on Terry's side, which he would have been a much better position with, as opposed to having all four of Gavin's Pokemon still here. That Tapu Lele is still, you know, ready to attack. Could protect this turn, you know? Um, and I, I'm actually not sure if we have Trick Room still up uh -huh. here. I lost count. Well, I mean, a play that Gavin can make is to protect and then Earthquake. There you go. Yeah, and I mean, that Landorus would obviously eat it up very well and not be uh -huh. affected by it. And the Snap of Mini is in a really good position to eat an Earthquake as well, but not get targeted down. Okay. But no, Landorus goes for a U-turn. And uh, probably going to switch up. We haven't seen Gavin's last Pokemon. Right. Oh, right. yeah, and I think Rodom, Snap of Mini, and uh, Landorus. Oh, you're right. So we are, yeah. maybe so, we'll see Oh, so it's a Metagross. So he didn't, he didn't bring the Amoongus uh, just for the Trick Room, so... Um, Which isn't too bad because yeah. now that Trick Room Center is gone, mm -hmm. and this Tapu Kini is going to be hit by a top, uh, by a Tapu Lele's Moonblast. Also gets a special attack drop, I want to say that. That's, not, that's, that's what Moonblast drops, yeah. yeah. Um, as Muddy Water connects with both Pokemon on here, finally knocks out that Tapu Lele. Uh, does an okay amount of damage onto that Metagross, and no accuracy drop on this side of the field. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's not too bad for Gavin because uh, dealing damage on the Fini now, Metagross comes in and it can deal uh, nah. damage. Uh, you can well, you can ice punch Terry's uh, Landorus, or you could just go for an Iron Hit onto the Fini. Yeah, and I mean. Now you're at this point where, uh, you know, if Terry were to switch out for that Incineroar, you know, if you're Gavin, you can protect an Earthquake and then just do some more damage on the thing. I don't think it's eaten its berry yet, though, so Gavin will have to watch out for that because uh, um, if you can't do the, if you can't get that all that damage output and procs that berry on Finny, then it's going to be around for a little bit longer to do some more damage onto Gavin's side of the field. Uh -huh. Or another thing Gavin could do would probably to Rock Slide and then go for an Iron Hit on the Finny, hoping that the Rock Slide doesn't proc Finny's berry. Because Landorus might just switch out because it, it fears like the Ice Punch. Oh, so. but it's Tapu Vinny who is switching out <laughs> on Terry's side of the field. Yeah. Surprise! As we get the Incineroar in place of it, intimidates both the attackers on Gavin's side. Yeah. Gonna do a minus... Uh, actually, sorry, not that Metagross though because the Clear Body hasn't Mega Evolved quite yet. So Gavin, really understanding Terry's strategy at this point, mm -hmm. finally goes for this Mega Evolution on here. And it is gonna be getting that tough possibility at a scary full attack. Yeah. So we'll see what they go for here. Landris goes for a protect here, not wanting to take any ice punch. Um, yeah, and I think that's exactly what that Metagross went for. Oh no, sorry. The Landris oh, going for the rock slide. Going to do some good damage onto that Incineroar, uh, but you know, that Incineroar uh -huh. kind of helps out a little bit as Metagross. And Metagross goes for, oh yeah. Does go for the ice punch onto there. Um, and so now that that Landris is locked into rock slide, I think if you're Terry, you're going to try to as best as you can go after that Metagross and take it down first because you want your Landris still around for this end game. Uh -huh. Well, I think, well, now that Metagross has, I mean, uh, Landorus has used up his Protect, uh, he probably has to go for an attack here. Uh, or Finny switch out. Yeah, too. so Metagross goes for a Protect, right? Trying not to get baited by the Fake Out. Uh, Landorus goes first, though. We don't see any Fake Outs coming from Incineroar, so he most likely went for an attack. Or And Terry decides to go for a Ground MZ onto the Metagross. That was quite a bold play uh, by Terry, expecting... Well, I mean, if, if Metagross didn't protect, then it would have gotten faked out and ground him with seed. But uh, we didn't see a fake out on the, uh, on the on, on, from the Incineroar. So that was a risky play that Terry's making, like hoping that uh, Gavin doesn't catch that he doesn't fake out and just goes for a nice punch. Man, that's like literally almost nothing at all on that Metagross on Gavin's side. And I think Terry is still in a place where he's going to have to play a lot of catch up on here. I mean, like, you know, the Pokemon aren't even, but. I mean, oh, wait, Gavin no. has that, like, 
despite being intimidated, he still has a rock side and has a chance for those flinches, and that, like, that 30% is really rough numbers to play with. This Metagross did burn its Protect, but it did eat up that ground DMZ really nicely. Um, still has the potential to go for the Ice Punch against Terry's uh, own lander is at this point. Uh -huh. And Metagross hasn't taken Intimidate damage, so he can go for a Stomping Tension on like, Incineroar, but he decides to switch out instead. So, uh, Oh, actually a switch out from both trainers on here as we have the Tapu Fini in place of that Landorus and the Rotom Heat in place of Gavin's Metagross. Uh -huh. Rockside once more from um, from that Landorus. Gonna pick up the knockout on the Incineroar, so one of And a critical hit on Fini. So you <laughs> yeah. know one of uh, one of Terry's main ways of dealing with that Metagross is gonna be knocked out as Tapu Fini finally gets a chance to eat its berry, gets back into the green because of that pinch uh, wiki berry. Mm -hmm. So Terry doesn't look like in a very good position here. He lost his main control, uh, main speed control, which is Trick Room. So now he has a Landorus, which is slower than Metagross, and a Tweety that has eaten his berry. So what Gavin can do right here is to just uh, chip away, such that they can be both in Metagross's KO range, and probably take the win from there. Yeah, I mean, I think Terry obviously you know still has a fighting chance because he can kind of. Just Go after, like, kind of go after this uh, Metagross later because the Sandos hasn't switched out. Mm -hmm. um, no flinch on um, from, from that rock side yet. Manages to get the speed control though on Gavin's um, Landorus uh, right now. And then a Thunderbolt from that Rotom is almost uh, not quite enough to knock yeah, out this Tapu Fini. Fini goes for a Muddy Water onto both Landorus and Rotom. But not enough to take out the Landorus, so then Landorus hangs on. But gets the accuracy drop oh, on okay. it, which might actually be big for later. Oh. Um, but now I think, I'm like almost sure that that Metagross is still faster than um, than all the Pokemon on Terry's side of the field though, so we're going to have to really consider that, and it's still a pretty good health right here. Um, so if, if Fini is slower than the Landorus after the speed drop, then all Metagross has to do is to Ice Punch Landorus, and Landorus goes for a Rock Slide. There's a lot of uh, yeah. there's gonna be a lot of RNG that Terry's gonna have to cross his fingers for. Yeah. As this Protect from Landorus uh, is gonna. Uh, Metagross goes for an Ice Punch under Landorus, gets into the Protect, but no. Does not Landorus miss the Fini. A... Oh, oh wait, oh, does the Tapu Fini? Did Tapu Fini avoid that attack? Yeah. Oh my God, Tapu Fini avoid the, the Rock Slide. Oh slide. Yeah. snap! Manages to almost. Okay. Oh my gosh. So this looks like it's gonna be a really close game to both. Uh, it's gonna yeah, definitely come down to the last couple of moves here yeah. as that Tapu Fini avoids the, the uh -huh. rock side from Landorus, hangs on, manages to connect the Metagross, gets the accuracy drop as well. So now so, it is both the Terry's Pokemon versus this Metagross, uh -huh. um, and this Metagross is gonna go for a Protect, and uh, that is, oh. if, I don't know if you guys can hear that in the back, but that's everybody watching. Is Terry going for an Earthquake and Earthquake is on Fini? The Earthquake himself? I think he Earthquake is on Fini. No. Oh no, he just doubles down on this guy. I mean, there's 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 no oh. point to like you know earthquake over here, especially when you have two Pokemon that can just go after this Metagross. Uh -huh. Um, Gavin's still not out of the woods yet, though. I mean, we saw that type of any avoid attacks or you know the misses uh -huh. on here, so there's still a chance for Metagross to kind of like get uh -huh. not hit uh, or go and for the Metagross goes for an for ice, ice punch on the Landorus. Does it kill? Yes, it does kill. Yeah. Does Feeny hit his muddy water? That's the big oh, question yeah. over here. <laughs> So and Spinny has to do enough damage to connect on here. Goes for the um, Muddy Water and you know, it does connect. <laughs> does connect on here. We'll pick up uh, this knockout on here, giving this game and the the PC to Terry. And so, you know, Terry was saying that his matchup was really bad. Uh -huh. Clearly not. We went to the game three and it was a very, very well like well played game from both of them. Uh, yeah, so Terry, your Premier Challenge 7 winner. Yeah, but that was really that was really close. That was actually really intense. I uh -huh. honestly thought that Gavin had it there for a minute, and uh -huh. it just kind of goes to show you like all of those kind of hidden ability, like kind of hidden uh -huh. stats too. That accuracy drop yeah. from um, that muddy water could have you know made all the difference on there, and just making sure those predictions are right and correct, and ha and uh -huh. having that ability to be like, hey, this is what's scary, and this is what I need to watch out for with my Pokemon. Um, obviously the trace with the guard bar for that terrain uh, was really funny on there. That and was unfortunate. It was very unfortunate for Terry, you know, recovered very quickly. So, but that was such a good round, like yeah. between those three games, you know. Um, uh, Gavin just kind of like having, yeah. trying to capitalize as much as he can on there, but in the end, you know, Terry being able to take it. So, very good game from both of them. Uh, congratulations once more to Terry. But Gavin just kind of showing us that hey, just because he hasn't been around as much doesn't mean he's quite out of the running at all. Um, so once again, I've been Regina. And I'm Sean. And thank you guys for joining us. Uh, have a good rest of your weekend. So we'll see you guys next time. Yeah.